all together. Hello, and welcome to Covert Castaway. I'm Holly. Je suis Stéphane. Join us as we share what we learn and how we're making the transition to wind blood cruising. We're really excited to share with you more information about our boat and tell you what it is. So uh, we were able to put a video together on YouTube. So if you haven't checked that out, head on over there. But right now we're in the Grand Mott and we have a lot to catch up on, don't mm-hmm. we? Yeah. So um, I guess first things first, we flew to Can over Labor Day and uh, we went over there for the boat show, and Utremer announced the new boat, which is the Utremer 52. We can say Utremer 52. Yeah. It's been one year. We couldn't say those two words together. So yeah. It's nice. It is nice to be able to talk about it. So at the Cam Boat Show, they did a big announcement, and we're going to tell you more about that. And uh, we were able to do some other great things at the, at the show and talk to some people that we want to share with you guys. Mm-hmm. Cool. So you want to dive in and talk a little bit about the boat? Yeah. Uh, well, the the boat uh, is the Automia 52, as we talked about it. It's uh, If people have uh, looked at the Automia 55 uh, from the outside, it looks uh, very, very similar. Uh, similar design, uh, three feet short, shorter. Uh, but basically same uh, architect, naval architect, VPLP, same interior design, same everything. So there's definitely a look and feel from the Automia 55. Right. And the only, like the biggest difference, there's a lot of differences, but the biggest difference is between the 52 and the 55 is the 55 has two helms Mm -hmm. and the 52 has the starboard helm. Uh, I'm really excited about the helm because it is the tilting wheel and you have the tilting wheel on the starboard side and then the Outremer tiller on the port side. As an option. Yeah, as an option. Yeah, which we selected. Which we did do. Um, so let's talk a little bit about what they kind of changed in this boat that's different from their traditional 45 and, and their 51 originally. Um, what they did through the manufacturing process is they were able to optimize the foam core, which meant that they didn't have to add as much resin. And it's hard to describe uh, kind of what they did, but... Well, basically, I mean, a boat is as rounded shapes, you know, for the hull. So if, if you picture... Uh, maybe a piece of cardboard and you're going to make some cuts in order to shape that cardboard in kind of more rounded shape. So when you inject the resin, the resin is going to go in all these cuts. The grooves, yeah. The grooves, yeah. And then this adds weight but doesn't add anything to the structure of the boat. And um, and so by basically creating um uh, smaller groups like well not smaller group but it's like it's like a kind of a lego puzzle so you basically have pieces of foam that that um close those gaps so they are shaped or they are cut in some ways where those gaps are removed as much as possible yeah. so therefore you save a lot of weight from that extra yeah. resin that was feeding. Those so there's groups. fewer gaps uh, in in between for resin to just fill yeah. randomly. And that's um, technology that they they brought from the gun gunboat. Gun boat, yeah, and the gunboat is one of the uh, is part of also the Grand Lodge yachting like Utomer. and so they they brought these to to the Utomer boats, and and then that started from that where all that weight saving. Uh, I forgot exactly how many, I mean, it's, we're talking about, I forget the exact number, but it's like 300 kilos or something pretty. It's pretty significant. Pretty significant. Yeah. Yeah. Don't quote me on the number. I forgot. Um, And then by starting with these, uh, then they're like, okay, we can make the boat lighter to go faster, or we can use those weight advantages, uh, weight savings to now add more volume to the boat. So that's been the, the, the principle for the Automia 55 and the Automia 52. Right. So the thing that, that helps me kind of think about it is 
you know, you can get performance, volume, capacity, weight, you can call it, we, we call it capacity. So you can get performance, capacity. Or payload, how yeah, much you can yeah. carry. Or value. And, but you can only have two of those at a time for your boat. So because we want more performance, uh, we have, you know, usually you would have to trade off on capacity. So what we really like about this boat is what they've done is they've pulled out some weight out of the boat to be able to add additional volume to the inside of the boat and make the boat much more, uh, lot, lots more headroom, lots more space, modern, more modern. Um, because I, be- adding the comfort at anchor basically right. or underway too, but I guess the kind of what people expect nowadays from, from a cruising boat. So before you had to kind of make a decision between, oh, do I buy a performance boat or do I buy kind of a production boat that has a lot more volume for like charter? And now it seems like they were to able us, to figure it's that the out. best of both worlds. Yeah. yeah, It's hard to describe on a podcast, so please check out the video and you, you see, but we posted a bunch of pictures and did a whole video on it, but... Mm-hmm. Um, you know, but they, they really kind of had kept these boats pretty compact in their originally because they're trying to keep the weight out of the boats. Even one more inch of headroom adds weight to the materials to build the boat. So all across the length of the boat. That's right. So quickly it adds up a lot. That's right. So there's more volume in the salon and the holes, a lot more headroom, which I talked about. And the open living space is a lot more airy. It just seems like there's more, it just seems modern, I guess is the best way to say it. The cockpit and the salon are more connected. Right. Because there's a bigger opening. And uh, so it's... uh, that's that's definitely a, a kind of the trend. Yeah. Uh, so the bigger time. opening is is like where the door, the sliding door is. Mm-hmm. So what they had done typically, and you see this in a lot of production boats, is they open up that whole. The sliding door opens up the whole wall. So that's what that's what this is, um, much like the fifty five. So and then they added carbon bulkheads, which make the boat um, much stiffer and lighter as well. And they added them in places where it really matters. So yeah, because you're making now the holes, like we said, more volume. So now those bulkheads, uh, because these boats are meant to perform in big seas and and uh, high speeds, so they're under a lot of effort, a lot of constraints, and and so you need to make sure now that you make them bigger. <laughs> Um, that you also have those carbon, those bulkheads who are like you know it continues st- stronger. To be stiff, yeah. So in in order to maintain you know the overall structure of those hulls, but also not to add weight, then it makes sense to move to um, uh, to carbon bulkheads. Yeah. So what are some things about the boat that you like the most? I'll I'll do mine after you. Well, the performance. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> obviously we wanted a a boat that sails and 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 i think um or we'll talk a little bit about we we had sail on the 45 which is a 48 foot boat and the 51 many times but we are still had never sailed on the Nutomia 55 so we'll talk about this later it was so awesome yeah so yeah it it definitely like those boats spoiler alert yeah they they go fast and um anyway we'll talk about it later but the tilting helm i really like you know so you're you can be outside and enjoying kind of a beautiful sail or if it's bad weather or at night and you want to you know be at the helm from inside the cockpit you can do that so yeah. that's and really i think cool. because some people <clears throat> because the the boats generally or most of the boats have had a helm station uh that has been kind of up on the deck on one side, and that's where we're coming from with our Fontaine Peugeot. And I remember initially, like, um, you know, hearing people like, you know, if you're selling a boat like an Outremer, that's that's basically, uh, I mean, you can be at the helm, but you're more exposed when you're at the helm. Um, they, they were like, oh, that's a no-no. And, and, and But having sailed those boats, the way I kind of picture it for people who haven't been on those boats it would be like you, you're basically selling it most of the time. So first you're on autopilot 
as most cruisers of the time, most yeah. of the time. So that's one. When you're on autopilot, you can be basically in the your new helm station is basically your salon or your cockpit. So it's um, it's much more comfortable uh, based on where you are on on the boat uh, because you have a lower center of gravity where you are and you're more in the middle of the boat and you're more protected from from anything and so this is kind of the best area really like if you wanted to design a helm station that was fully protected that would be the best and then everything it would be like for people who come from monohulls i mean you have a cockpit you have all these winches around the cockpit and nowadays, you know, the, the monoholes have gotten wider and wider uh, to offer more room and stuff. And it would be like, basically, you're, it, it, the, the way I picture it, not to try to explain it, is kind of you're in a, in a wide monohull Monohol, yeah. and you have that Down whole cockpit. cockpit yeah. And that's where you're going to make all your adjustments uh, for sail trim and everything. Yeah. So the, the reasons you go on deck... To is really if you want to have fun, take the tiller or take the wheel and uh, spend some time sailing the boat. So that would be like one reason. You could do it from the carpet, but typically like you want your face into the wind and you want to have great visibility of the waves and so forth. Another one, obviously, you're going to anchor, you're coming to a marina, but those are like short amount of time overall. But if, Putting the sails up and down. Yeah, putting the sails yeah. up and down. But now, and docking. Yeah, yeah, that's why I say in the marina. And yeah. So um, now, if you, uh, if let's say if it was raining and and you're motoring because there is no wind or something, um, then that's when you tilt uh, mm -hmm. the wheel inside the cockpit. You have great visibility in front of you, so you are like in the best yeah position possible. So that's I, I know some people are kind of like. Think think like okay, that's a no no because they think they have better visibility like uh, on top of on deck. You can see everything from the cockpit. Yeah, it's amazing. It's actually incredible. They, they've added headroom, yeah. and so you you can be standing for even tall people and have great visibility. So mm -hmm. so that's one way to maybe like wrap your head around this, and and the best way is to obviously do a test sail mm -hmm. and realize for yourself. But that's definitely something that that was new to us, and having spend time now sending those boats it just totally makes sense yeah it makes sense and uh yeah and they still have the nav nav table uh inside the salon and it's a proper nav station. it is yeah. it is you're you're sitting i mean you're like facing you're, forward you're facing forward centered, yeah and the height like you you don't have to raise yourself like you have like really perfect visibility mm -hmm. at the nav station so yeah mm -hmm. Yeah, so here's a, a few more things that are cool about it. Um, the My Free Space, so they have a, you can have the option to convert one of the cabins into whatever configuration you want. I think there's four configurations or five. I don't know, I lost track. Mm -hmm. um, but what we're doing is you can have it be all storage, you can have it be storage and a bed. And a desk, which is what we're doing. So it's kind of the bed folds down. It's like a twin bed that folds down. So you can use it as an office. And then if you need the bed, there's a bed there. Um, it can be a bunk bed room for two kids. and Or it can be like a regular cabin. Mm -hmm. So there's a bunch of different options. So that's really cool. So we'll get a little bit of extra storage. And then we'll have kind of a you know, little corner where one of us can kind of spread out if we need to down there to have a Zoom call or whatever. Um, the other thing they've done, they've done like these really cool little clever things like in, in the My Free Space, there's the desk, but um, they have this uh, steel cover or something that's like tucked away. Stainless steel, Stainless steel. I don't know. Something, yeah. yeah. And you pull it out and you put it on top. So if you have to like work on something, like um, a workbench. Like a workbench. You won't actually, you know, mess Damage up the, the table. Desk, yeah. yeah. So that's that's kind of like they've they've thought through. There's a there's a few things like that that are really cool. Yeah, it's like multi purpose mm -hmm. uh, and on a boat. I mean it's it's really essential and, and yeah. so we feel like we you know, we have a second so we have the three cabin version. So one hull as our previous boat is the is the owner's hull. 
And on the other side, we have the aft cabin, uh, mm -hmm. and then and then forward um, it would be the the multifunction. Yeah. Um, yeah, my free space. And then the the storage lockers on this thing, because the holes are so long, yeah, are huge. You could put so much stuff in there. Yeah, I mean it, it's amazing. Uh, we've seen what uh, the Outremer Fifty Five Saga hole number one was able to to like fit in those, and they had a picture. And they, they were doing a cleaning day. <laughs> and so they emptied all the water toys they have and spread them out on the net and or basically on the bow of the boat. And you look at the picture because they have like, I mean, they are like a family of four and they do like every water spot. You can in, imagine. imagine. Yeah. yeah. And you look at the picture, it's like, no, no way. way. <laughs> <laughs> I had to ask, can you send a picture once everything is put inside and organized? So, so yeah, you can so store a lot of stuff yeah. in those halls. So that's pretty cool. The other thing is there's no access from the inside of the boat. So that was one thing that was pretty cool about our previous boat, but it's safer because they're watertight bulkheads. Mm -hmm. So, um, you know, the storage in these holes is huge. You can, it's easy to walk down and get in there. It's easy to kind of reach down and grab things. Yeah. As I mean, well. and one, one thing we're on our previous boat, so we could access, um, this, this, uh, the, storage closet, the storage closet where we kept basically old spare parts and tools. So now we will put this into the, uh, my free space. Mm -hmm. So that will be easily accessible, Obviously, there will be some stuff that uh, we don't need as often that we will store into the mm -hmm. into the bows. But so, uh, what else? Oh, we got lithium batteries. So yeah. we have two lithium batteries that give us nine twenty amp hours working. Yeah, twelve thousand watts total, mm -hmm. and so that's a lot of lithium combined with. Uh, uh, 2,000 watt of solar panels, 800 watts on the Davids, and uh, 1,200 watts about on the um, coach roof. So uh, that's, I would say that starting with the 55, that's new for Utomea. They're adding a lot more uh, solar panels. Uh, so combined with lithium batteries, um, yeah, that's going to be a, a kind of, we feel pretty uh Pretty good. Yeah. And we even went with the all electric appliances. Mm -hmm. So getting rid of uh, propane or or yeah. butane, whatever you use. And so that's I'm not getting rid of my hot my instant pot though. So yeah. yeah. So that's electric, that's <laughs> fine. So so that's that's also a project that we were planning to do in a couple of years on the on previous uh, boat. So now we're yeah. starting from that done from a factory. So it's going to be a clean install. Yeah. And then, uh, and then for energy, we're also going to get uh, when we do crossings and and um, at night uh, with all the instruments, autopilot, so forth. Uh, we'll add um, the what and see. Right. And we're going to get the racing version. So then we no will generator. No generator, yeah. saving a lot of money, saving a, a lot, lot of, of weight. weight and headaches potentially. And, you know, a lot of people are taking them out. Like even, you know, you see people on the performance boat are ripping them out too. So, so that's funny because we've or seen... production boats, sorry. We've seen, yeah, people will be cruising for a while or tend to remove them after a while. Yeah. Um, and then, but we see a lot of Ultramare 55 owners who are deciding to also go with the, uh, it's a smaller generator, but go with a generator anyway, and not go with the hydro generator. So, so you know, in our case, we're like, no, no to the generator and for weight reason, for cost reasons. And we feel like, uh, it's mostly the two of us. And we feel like we can manage well, the energy. Well, and you have the engines if you have to turn it on. Yeah, so you obviously have yeah. two backup. And they are not made for that, you know, as right. the sole reason. But, uh, you know, when you move uh, to Anchor or to a marina, I mean, that's easily an hour. And with lithium batteries, you can you can really charge those, like, pretty quickly. So, Yeah, I wanted to mention something. Um, also, they took into consideration is... They thought through at the helm, they have this little, it's like a little raised platform. Mm -hmm. So when you're standing at the helm, you can see better, mm -hmm. you know, especially it's a problem for me because I'm short, right? So on, on the other boats, it's hard to kind of see up and over. So they have like this little raised area 
which is really cool. Mm -hmm. And um, what were some other things that I, I liked about the the little touches that they had that just made it more, I think, you know, geared towards shorter people <laughs> in general, everything's like within reach, the winches, they tilted, uh, forward a bit. Um, well, they improved the height. At the height previous of it, boats, yeah. They were like pretty high, high. So it's yeah. not a natural like way to, uh, right. to use the winch. The but throttles are the electric throttles. Mm -hmm. And instead of the being way up top, which they're, it's just, it's just awkward if you're short, um, to try to, you know, handle those and look behind you. It's not an, it's not like an easy, mm -hmm. it's like a kind of wonky setup. Um, now they're electric and they're, they're down by the helm, um, like the 55. So there's pictures if you want to check those out. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, so that's what we did. Um, and can is, is we, you know, wanted to be there when they were talking about the boat and, you know, we were able to kind of get a video out on that and, you know, we're super excited about it. We, uh, had a chance also when we came back to La Grande Motte, um, to visit the factory, which we'll talk about in a minute too here. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, um, that was kind of a primary goal. I mean, to be there for the announcement and, and, but we ended up using, um, kind of the boat show to uh, yeah. to to meet a lot of people so I think we went to like the boat what was it the Annapolis boat show we went to in whatever year that was that was 2019 or 2018 or something before obviously before the pandemic and mm. we were like oh my god crazy town like we'll never have to go to a boat show again you right mm -hmm. And so when we were thinking about going to Cannes, and by the way, we're out here too for Uchimere Week um, as well. So we had a reason to come out. But um, we were like, oh, God, what are we going to do at the boat show, you mm -hmm. know? And it was actually really useful um, for different reasons than we thought. Yeah, part of it, I guess, because, I mean, it had a big selling. It had two, basically, it's like two boat shows in, in, in one, and there are two separate locations, but you can go pretty easily from one side to the other. But I guess it might be historically more known for, like, mono yachts. The yachts, like yeah. Monte Carlo or whatever. Yeah, yeah. and yeah. so maybe less people coming to, I It was don't know. great. We got on the boats. We, we yeah, saw, it, you know, we, we toured the gunboat, which was so cool, yeah. so awesome. We got on the, was it the 58 Swan, the, mm -hmm. the newest one they have. Um, we got on the Allure and the RM. Uh, mm -hmm. which are also with Grand Large Yachting, which mm -hmm. are really good looking boats uh, as well for monohulls. And then we got on the Windelow, which we, uh, when did we, oh, that was the La Grande Motte boat show. It was just a line, you know, down the column to see it. And I was interested in seeing it because they're offering, they're kind of supposed to be like the fully green, sustainable, mm -hmm. electric, everything solar, you know, all of these things. And so we got, we got to check that out. I think, um, what I appreciated about that boat is they're really trying to push the sustainability and they have a really clever way that they built the boat out of, um, volcanic rock, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, I don't, I forget what they called it. Um, yeah, I think it was like a yeah. base of volcanic ba yeah, rock. Yeah, yeah. And, yeah. and and they explain that, and it makes it really strong. Um, and it also has the forward the for, what do you call it? forward helm? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. in the front of it, and everything's within reach, and it's really well protected. Like some of the forward helm boats are just so exposed. Like you're you're sitting there going, "Oh my god, there's so much wind." Because mm. um, any apparent wind, you know, the faster you go, then the more exposed you feel, right? Or, or the spray from waves yeah. and stuff. But yeah, they this is kind of tucked in, right? It looked pretty cool. They, they have some protections on the side. Yeah, and um, so we've never sailed on the boat with a forward helm, but yeah. definitely, I mean, the gunboat. Is a perfect example. Yeah. And uh, that's part of the trademark, I guess, of yeah. the gunboats. And so, yeah, I mean, I think they, they've come up with uh, they some started cool things from, for sure. Yeah, yeah. From some. So that's, that's uh, pretty cool. But the design, frankly, I, I think has a long way to go um, just in terms of, you know, it, it, the outside, like how it looks. Um, so they have really cool things about the sustainability and the materials. 
Um, but yeah. To be validated also, yeah. like, I mean, on paper, and uh, there's a lot of cool stuff. And I think in general, we see, I mean, a lot of, uh, definitely a trend, you know, right. about going green and electric. And, or hybrid. And, yeah, and, and we can that. share kind of a little bit about our opinion, um, because we sailed back uh, from Cannes to La Grande Motte and kind of reminded us as to why <laughs> diesel engines can be useful. Yeah. And so, so anyway, we'll talk about this. But uh, yeah, I mean, it, it's cool to see uh, many, many um, um, the trends. You know, boats, yeah. manufacturers moving in that direction. But uh, yeah, it's still it's still early, but uh, definitely that's towards the future. But uh, yeah. maybe there is still, a, uh, I mean, you can be an early adopter or you can, you know, the, the trend is moving that direction and wait for kind of uh, uh, things to be more mature and, and prices to come down. But yeah. So we also got to uh, talk to the people uh, who were providing some of the equipment on our boat. So uh, again, we were able to talk to uh, Poshan, who is providing all the electronics, the BNG. Mm-hmm. Uh, we talked to the Oscar people again, um, and you are know, really interested in that. If if we can kind of see that, we talked to the. That's and just to. So people, that's the uh, kind of uh, detection, uh, collision detection. Uh, thermal detection. With thermal cameras yeah. and also RGB cameras. Um, that's the, basically uh, an equipment that's at the top of the mast. So that's added, it's complements basically radar and AIS. Um, so, yeah, we are definitely looking into this. Uh, we're, we're going to have a different watermaker brand this time around, still 12 volts, still, uh, I think, 100 or 105 liters, I forget, but in that range. And uh, the brand is Desolator. And we got uh, to talk to the guy. He was uh, so hilarious. Yeah, and super was helpful. He, was he from the Netherlands? Is yeah, that- yeah. And uh, he's like an engineer in the company. And, and so we got a lot of cool tips. Yeah. And the thing is, is with our old water maker, what was it an aqua base? Yeah, aqua base. Uh, you know, to pickle it, it was like this whole dramatic involved, like full day affair. And Aptic. so we <laughs> once wanted you know. to, once you know how to do it. Yeah. But yeah. the first time it took you a while to figure it out. Yeah. Because you're afraid of making a mistake because yeah. you have so many steps and you have so many valves to close open. And, and so you, you know, in, this is a much simpler process. And so that was pretty cool to, to talk to him and gave us a lot of, uh, and he was like, I was like, okay, so what's it take to pickle? He's like, okay, you ready? Mm-hmm. And he hit a button and he's like, okay, you're done. And I was like, it's as easy as that. It was just, it was just really cool. Yeah, they have a very different approach, very philosophy, different. and and so he's uh, he's now a great contact we have mm-hmm. to <laughs> to ask questions. We talked to someone about cork. Um, the jury's still out on whether we're going to do that or not. Yeah, uh, that's for the cockpit and the transom. Yeah, and yeah, it definitely adds to the look. Uh, and, and and the like walking on it. Yeah, you know. it's it's not as hard as the, the regular Dex. kind of uh, yeah. But but, uh, but at the same time, yeah, we need to find the the right solution, and also thinking of not adding too much weight between the um, you know cork is lighter than other like what we had the. Um, We're not going to do flexitic. Flexitic, yeah. yeah, and then but when you add the weight of that plus the glue, so we're still looking at uh, the best option for us. Um, then we talked to North Sales. Yeah, about sales. So we're starting to know quite a few people at North Sales because we went to the factory or to the facility like in the, in uh, Minden. Yeah, in well, we learned that their biggest sail loft is 25 minutes from our house in, in Tahoe. So we, you know, went on a tour and we met the team there. And then one of our neighbors actually works over there. Yeah. We found out. So it was really cool. And we have a lot to talk about when it comes to sales. So we'll kind of leave that for mm-hmm. another discussion. Um, but we're really excited to talk with those guys. And um, looks like that's the direction we're going to go. Mm-hmm. Okay. So then what we got to do next is we got to get on a 55 for 24 hours. We were on it. Well, first we also went to the motor yacht side. Oh, you want to talk about that? (laughs) It seems like, I don't know. It's kind of interesting because you, you swimming pools and movie stars and yeah. And (laughs) 
it, it's just like it seems like a whole different world it is from the sailing world yeah and so it was just fun to walk around and, and the contrast between the two what was so shows. funny is like the sailing side was all like french and the motor yacht side was all Italian. It seemed. For, yeah. It seemed like it. Mm-hmm. And like everybody was speaking Italian when we went over there. And mm-hmm. then, you know, everybody's French on the other side. So, yeah, it was really cool. I, I have been to the Monaco uh, yacht show because I happened to be in Monaco for a business trip once. And it was the same weekend. Mm-hmm. And so I just like happened to be there. And um, yeah, it was. It's a whole different scene for sure. And by any definition, sailboats are expensive. But, but you, <laughs> you go to the Marriott side, yeah. and I mean, you don't have to ask for the prices. You can see the the dollar signs Obviously, just looking yeah. at them, and then you come back to the sailboat and the, side, and, the and the you're like, "Look so small." Oh yeah, it's yeah. not as expensive anymore. <laughs> it's, so it's, it's all about you know references. So let's talk about our our sail from Canada yeah. to La Grande Motte. That was cool. Yeah, yeah. That, that's something we. We definitely wanted to sell a Neutromer 55 because it's going to be more similar how it sells and, and than with our boat. And also the a lot of the options are, are very, yeah, it's uh, very similar. similar. So to talk to the owner. Um, so thank you, Emilio from mm-hmm. Catarsis for allowing us to join your boat. And then... Um, so so 24 hours. Yeah, that was 24 mm-hmm. hours. And then we, um, we left Cannes in lighter. Um, was like seven, eight knots of wind, sometimes nine, and so in flat water. And it was then, beautiful. Yeah, it was beautiful sailing. I don't remember how fast we were going, but we were we were cooking for well, sure. Well, cooking and in light air. I mean, you're well, not... cooking in light air. I mean, that was awesome. <laughs> we were yeah, moving kind of wind speed almost, and then um, and just kind of thinking back with our old boat at, with this wind, like we at nine knots, we would have considered putting the sails up, but you're like, Oh, is that going to be stay at nine knots? Or is that going to come back down? So you're asking versus here. It's like, okay, you put the sails up yeah. and then you're moving. And so that was, that was like, uh, yeah, that was really, really nice. And then and overnight you, there was like no wind, like the wind died or we were going around a corner or something. Yeah. So, um, the, the wind died and then we knew, uh, like basically 24, 25 nautical miles ahead that, uh, there was uh, wind and favorable wind going the same direction as we were going. And so this is where it was very interesting because, um, obviously you have diesel engines, um, and this boat. And so one option, you could just bob around and then wait for the wind to come back, but then you're going to spend the whole night there and potentially, I mean, I didn't look at the forecast, you know, forward, but the, the wind that, you know, are further forward, uh, just four hours away, motoring, uh, could, you know, die, well, could Thunder- turn around and then, um, and so, but in this case, you know, this is nice to know that, okay, we have diesel engines, we know we can do four hours of motoring and we can catch new wind and then basically get to like Hon Mutt within 24 hours. And then you get there in the end of the afternoon and you spend one night at sea. And so that was kind of the the logical thing to do. If you have an electric boat, um, yeah, I mean, you're probably not, you're going to be on the high end of the range with like 24, 25 nautical miles. So you, you'll you probably motor at uh, half the speed to try to save on that. And um, and so you might not catch this wind on time. And so, so that was a good reminder as to the future is definitely electric, uh, just like cars. But you have, when you go do world cruising and um, then you have kind of a range limitation and uh and it could be a safety in this case it was not but um, well what i was going to say was the thunder and lightning storm came the the you know later that day when we arrived Mm -hmm. so it was good that we motored because you know if we were just like cruising we weren't like doing a destination thing which is sort of we were sort of on a boat delivery from the boat show Mm -hmm. back to la grande motte um, you know, so that's what made us think like, oh, okay. Yeah. You, you know, it's easy to say, oh, we'll just bob around and catch wind whenever we catch it. But if you won't need to get out for some reason, it's good to have the diesel yeah, still. It's, it's, yeah. um, you know, and, and, and we, we had a crew and, but if you're two people and that means you're spending potentially another night at sea, 
so all these are considerations. There is no like perfect answer, but that was definitely a reminder yeah. if you're going to do uh, kind of a circumnavigation or, you know, halfway around the world or, or even less. But that, um, yeah, this is definitely, um, we want to model the least amount of possible. And that's one good reason to move to a performance catamaran. But in some cases, when you have weather forecast and you know what's out there, it's nice to be able to catch that uh, that weather you want and keep moving. Yeah, so then we caught downwind and we put the Jenniker up and that was yeah. so awesome. Yeah, and there was a downwind Jenniker. And um, so that was, yeah, that was like pretty sweet. And we were screaming. Jibing. We were yeah. screaming. It was, I think at one point I saw it hit. 18 knots we were going yeah this is the funny part of this is how much wind was it It was like 24 mm, that much I don't 20 know. 24 it's that's the thing is is the boat is <laughs> it's why, quiet it, it's quiet and it's comfortable so the number when you look at the speed the number like doesn't translate in your head it's the weirdest thing like we were sitting there and we were just like chit-chatting with this other couple that lives in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. uh, they were on the boat with us. And we were just talking and talking. And suddenly we we heard like more water and you know out of the back of the boat. And we all kind of looked back over to over the transom and we were like, oh my gosh. And then our necks all shifted to look at how fast we were going on the um chart prop plotter. And it was like 17, 18. Yeah. Which I mean, was crazy. Because we didn't even notice it. You no, know? and at one point I remember filming and it was just like, I mean, it's not like speed, like on other boats, you're like, oh, I reached like 17. No, I know at one point was I was filming speed. it yeah. and it was like 15 steady, like staying there yeah. and, and totally comfortable. I was joking after like, it, it needs to have like a sport mode where the boat like somehow Shakes tells you, or something. yeah, vibrates. So. <laughs> so I guess what um, Eloa uh, was telling us is like, okay, when you get into like uh, the, the 18, 19 or something, the boat is going to tell you more about, you know, like the, the speed, but at, at 15, no, like was, 17, it was so cool. It, it yeah. was like totally, totally like uh, um, comfortable and um, not realizing those numbers. And so you can really, get some miles in 24 hours. And uh, so that's that's pretty cool. The other thing I wanted to mention is um, we were sleeping down below uh, during the night. You had night watch, but um, we were down underneath there, and I was amazed how quiet it was. Mm -hmm. You know, like on our other boat, there was just more noise. And um, it, it was just it was just really quiet. You know, I mean, boats have noises like that. You can hear the water go past and that sort of thing, but it wasn't as, I don't know, violent or. Yeah. I think we had only one time where it, the, the, it's, it's a big wave under yeah, the boat, came under. but uh, the rest. Yeah. Uh, yeah. That was really nice. So we ended up in La Grand Mott and, um, we were able to, which is where we are now, by the way, um, and we're speaking into our computer, not our like cool fancy microphone. So hopefully this recording comes out okay. But we were able to tour the factory and see hole number one and hole number two of the boat, which uh, yeah, hole, we were surprised that yeah. hole number two is basically when we left back in July. That's at the stage where hole number one was. So and now hole number one, they are putting all the electrical cables and everything that uh, you know, water uh, pipes and everything um, that is being installed right now. Hole number one. Yeah, and you know, like first I got on hole number two, thinking it was hole number one, <laughs> and I'm like, you guys haven't done much like since we've been gone. He's like, no, this is hole number two. Uh -huh. Yeah, so it was really cool. And then um, hole number one is actually the whole bottom of a boat, so you know, it's out of the mold. You know, they're they're laying the electrical. Uh, it's it's really really cool to see and um, really really exciting. I think that that's gonna you know get get and be done soon. Uh -huh. So what else? We've been, you know, heads down on um, some other stuff. I had some work stuff going on, but La Grand Mott's beautiful this time of year. There aren't that many tourists. And, yeah, tourists uh, are gone. Or I guess there are probably some tourists, but they're all like all 
either retired or people with no kids still are yeah. enjoying the month of September yeah. in La Grande Motte after yeah. all the month of July and August. I think the local people are enjoying the month yeah. of September. And when now that all the tourists, the crazy <laughs> number <laughs> of tourists are, are back, you know, and with school and stuff, like so back home. And the place we're staying is like the perfect location because... On the back, we are on the beach, so we're overlooking the beach, and La Grande Motte has this huge, expansive beach that you can walk for, you know, a really long time. Mm -hmm. And then out the other side is where Outremer splashes the boats. So we'll be sitting on the back deck, and we'll suddenly see a crane, and we're like, oh, go take pictures, mm -hmm. you know, so we can, we can kind of, it's kind of, it's kind of cool to geek out and watch them put the stuff, on, the, the boats in the water. Mm -hmm. so yeah so we're we're next week or this weekend actually we start uh Utremer week again which oh that's Utremer academy Utremer academy so yeah. that's where we have um, basically owners or future owners i should say um join uh basically you on an Utremer for the weekend spend one night on the boat and go sailing for two days with a coach and so and it rolls into Utremer week yeah which is um, more classes and training and that sort of thing. Mm. And we're really trying to take more video this time because the first time we went, we were just so engrossed in what we were learning, we forgot to take video. Um, and we want we want to do that a bit more. So yeah, mm -hmm. that's what's going on with us. I think the thing we would love to have people weigh in on is um, they're not the washing machine. Well, I think we've made a decision on the washing machine. So <laughs> it was is, like, no, we don't need a washing machine. I was like, there's, it's easy to do, you know, the laundry. There's not that much. We don't wear that many clothes when we're on the boat, you know, and when we do, there's laundry mats and all this. And then um, we started to watch the people in Glide World and Fiji and whatnot. And they're like, no, you definitely need something because there's nothing. Yeah. Um, and we had ruled out the three kilos thinking it's like it was stupid because it's so, it's small. so small when you look at it and you're used to your washing machine at it's home. it's super light. Yeah. And and now it's funny because we've we've gone we've through all the around. options from no to like five kilo, and now we're selecting the yeah. three the kilos. The thing we thought was so dumb <laughs> in the beginning, yeah. <laughs> because now we we kind of rationalized it by yeah. the, with the type of clothes we're going to wear on the boat, and and the type of sheets and towels we're going to buy. Then you realize the three kilo is the one that makes sense. Yeah. So it saves weight, uh, which we we want for every option possible. And it's it's totally like um, uh, adapted to uh, what what we're going to be uh, washing. So we'll have a washing machine. So we change our mind on that. Yeah. And um, but the big the big decision right now is whether or not we go for the carbon cross beam. Um, it is expensive. Very expensive. But. It looks so badass. Very badass. So badass. <laughs> it's so badass. And the 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 boat that had it that we were on um, on the fifty five. It just it just it looked, looks <sighs> like solid. It yeah. looks like it's one piece. Right. And you look at it and you're like, oh, okay, you can load this thing. Yeah. The, the, those things are not moving. It holds the bows, the long bows together. So you're like, yeah, this is, this is kind of, it feels like probably like from an engineering point of view, there is probably like, you know, I mean, it's probably more stiff, obviously, than, than. I'm the, sure there's the math behind why how, they uh, build it because for a reason, like it, it definitely adds a benefit to make the boat stiff. Yeah. But. And I'm sure the compression beam is fine, yeah. but it's just like the visual, your instinct tells you, oh yeah, this is like. This boat, after like 10 years sailing around the world, like won't have moved yeah. <laughs> an inch because everything is held together in the front. We saw one. They, <laughs> they took us over to the gunboat factory, which is right next door. Mm -hmm. And um, they showed us that they just, uh, the, the carbon crossbeam arrived for this big gunboat that mm -hmm. worked. I don't I remember how big it is, like a 68 or something like yeah. that. And it, it just, it looks like a huge cross, like at church or something like, you know, I was like, can you just put it in the middle of the, of, of the, uh, the, they have this outdoor factory, I don't know, quad area, I guess you would call it. And, um, you can put it out there and it'd be like, yeah, it was just so cool. I mean, it, it looks almost like a mass when you're looking, it's just so, so, so long, so big. Yeah. 
So, so anyway. Anyway, that's... so we're like, oh, it's so cool. And they were like, oh, it's so expensive. So mm. I don't know. We'd love to hear everybody's opinions on that if you have one. For sure. Um, We've said, what are the three keywords? We have lean. We have modern. And badass. And badass. Yeah. So that would fit that category. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway, that's that's all from us for now. And um, we're really looking forward to any questions or anything you guys have about Utramik, about any of the boats, about, you know, some of the things we're learning. We'd love to hear from you at sailingowen at gmail.com. Mm-hmm. Fair winds for now. Bon bon. Thank you for listening. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, like, or share with another covert castaway. Fair winds for now.